Good evening, I'm Clive Myrie and Graham Norton. Your cold open starts now. Who are tonight's guests? I know this. Uh, Daniel Craig, Ian McKellen, Fleur East, John Bishop, Music and Charlie Puth, <coughs> another one. Oh, oh, you, Clive, Clive Myrie. Correct. And <laughs> what famous phrase... I've started so I'll finish. What famous phrase do you say at the end of the cold open when you can't think of a punchline? Oh, that one's easy. Let's start the show! <laughs> Welcome to the show. We've got some exclusive guests for you tonight. I tell you, they are rarer than a One Love armband at the World Cup. Uh, That's rare. Uh, everyone watching the World Cup? Everyone watching it? Yeah, yeah. I tell you, there's already been one major upset. Yeah, it's being held in Qatar. Uh, now, come on, come on. We all know there are many, many perfectly valid reasons why it's being held in Qatar. Here are just a few of them. Uh, uh, there have already been some big shocks. Argentina were beaten by Saudi Arabia. Germany was beaten by Japan. Who's going to be beaten next? Brazil? France? Anyone who's gay? Uh, <laughs> and I love this. Like, for a nation that encourages female modesty, I think it's quite ironic that the, Qatar <laughs> the Qataris came up with a stadium like this. <laughs> that's... That's the Al Janoub Stadium. <laughs> I am told it's got a unique atmosphere. Yeah, inside, it smells like one of Gwyneth Paltrow's candles. <laughs> now, sadly, there have been some access issues for fans trying to get into the stadium. Uh, apparently, there is a back entrance, but it's illegal to use that. <laughs> hey, let's get some guests on! Season with the stars of Mother Goose. John Bishop and Sir Ian McKellen will be here. Yeah. But first, he's one of the BBC's top news reporters who's now turned presenter of the classic quiz show Mastermind. Please welcome Clive Murray. Here he is now. Hello, sir. Hello, Hello. 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 She's a brilliant pop sensation and radio star, now hoping to win the Strictly Glitter Ball. It's Fleur East! Oh. <laughs> Wowza! Hello. Hey. Hey. Lovely to see you. Lovely to see you. There you go. You can move up. Oh, yeah. You are. You are. Oh. And he handed in his license to kill, but now he's back on our screens as super sleuth Benoit Blanc in Glass Onion and Knives Out Mystery. It is Mr. Daniel Craig! Oh. You all feel welcome. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Lovely. I think, and I don't, I'm, I'm not a trained person, I think you, you bunch up a bit. Yeah? Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yes. Just a little... little well, yeah. You stay there. Oh, stay, OK. You stay, yeah, there we go. shout at me. That's your drink. <laughs> that, yeah, very good. And, Daniel, here you are. It's your first appearance not as Bond, and I wasn't going to mention... No, but last time I was here, we were literally eight foot apart. Yeah, we were on chairs over there. Yeah, you were over there, there. Yeah. I was over here. There was four people in the audience. <laughs> so we had a great time. Yeah. Oh, the laughs we had. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, you know, it's lovely to be here, we're having a nice time, but Flurries, I feel bad that we're keeping you up. You're because uh, oh. well, you, you missed your radio show this week, didn't you? Um, yeah, I was a little late. A little late for the radio show. Um, I, I mean, I get up at 5 a.m. I'm on air 6 till 10, and then I dance sometimes until 10 p.m. So it's, uh, it's savage. Yeah. Yeah. Are you so, a cane? Yeah, oh, yeah. 
My right. feet are swollen. I don't even know how they got in these shoes, actually, wow. tonight, to yeah. be fair. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and what happens when you don't show up for the radio show? Does just whoever was on before you just keep going? Yeah, they just keep it ticking. It's, it's quite embarrassing, though, because I'll be in the taxi and I'll go, oh, can you just put on Hits Radio? And then I'll hear them going, Fleurist is on the way, guys. They're <laughs> 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 getting updates and I'm like, oh! Well, we'll get this going as quickly as possible <laughs> and get you out of here and back to bed. Uh, and Clive Myrie, hard-bitten BBC news journalist, I was thinking, how comfortable will you be in a showbiz environment? Mm. But actually, you're used to it, because weren't you in L.A. for a couple of years? Yes, I was. It was my second posting as a foreign correspondent. I was the Los Angeles correspondent. And uh, I did three Golden Globe Awards, I did the Oscars, I did the uh, Emmys, yeah. It was uh, it was a fantastic time. So because yeah, I'm used to sort of being this close to <laughs> Hollywood royalty yeah. and superstar. We should have put up a small rope. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> a little red one. A little red one. <laughs> Come in. <laughs> All right, look, let's start with Daniel Craig's film. It's called Glass Onion: A Knives Out a Mystery. It is in theaters now, but just for a week, and then it'll be on Netflix from the 23rd of December. Uh, so, if people, you know, didn't see the first one, explain Knives Out and explain Benoit Blanc, your character. It's a murder mystery. It's um, sort of uh, a big homage to Agatha, Agatha Christie and all sorts of other things. And I play Benoit Blanc, who's a detective from the southern states, somewhere in the southern states of America. Um... <laughs> <Somewhere. laughs> <laughs> but he's a, he's a famous detective. Yes, in the in the world that we are, he's a, uh, he's a, he's he's the world's most famous and best detective. The best. Yeah. 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 So you all go to this island. We all go to the island. Uh, I'm invited, um, although I'm not supposed to be invited. Um, so you don't quite know what's going on, and uh, it unfolds, um, as these things do. Yeah, and you solve it. Right. Uh, <laughs> spoiler. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, well, look, I'll tell you what, we'll watch a clip. Uh, this is from the new one, Glass Onion, and this is you, as Benoit Blanc, uh, meeting your host, played by none other than Ed North. Well, this... Oh, my goodness me, this is not... That is... What, what is that? Oh, my God, it's full of stars. <laughs> 2010, yeah, we make contact. It's, um, this is amazing, just amazing. Uh, I'm so happy to be here. And, uh, is there any role you'd like me to play in this murder mystery game as the, uh, I don't know, detective? I'll be more than happy to oblige. Just to be included and to, to meet you. Is, is that a motor car? Oh, yeah, that's my baby blue. It's one of a kind. It goes anywhere I go, all around the world. Why is it on the roof? Because there's nowhere to drive it on the island. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <Very good. laughs> and the, the story is, as you say, it's kind of that classic thing. It's a sort of closed room, except it's, a, it's an island. Yeah, it's a closed room, I suppose. It, you call it a chamber piece, don't you? Was that what they're called? Oh, yeah. I just know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and a lot of people uh, have talked about the, the Benoit Blanc's accent mm -hmm. there. And that, was he always going to sound like that? Was that in the original script? It was, was there. It was written. Uh, um, it, it, it said it was a very sort of small piece of stage direction, which said uh, Benoit Blanc with a subtle lilting southern accent, which I flatly refused. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it ignored and got on with that. So. And um, it's a, it's a big sp like it's one of those things in your head. Did you think? Yeah, I'll do that. And then you get to presumably a read through and you're going, oh. Okay. I, I mean, I said to Ryan, the director, I just said, are you sure? And he went, yes. And I went, okay. <laughs> um, and I just, then I, you know, then it's just work. I, I, have, I really struggle with accents. I can't, I, I just can't turn it on um, or mimic things. So I have to kind of learn it like by rote, like musically, and oh. then get it into my head. And then once it's in, it's in, and then I can't get rid of it, but it's... Uh... And, Fleur, uh, you are married to uh, a French man. I am, Marcel. Yes. Marcel. Oh. So do you... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's a good name for a Frenchman, isn't it? Yeah. 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 It works. It, it works. works. <laughs> yeah, it really works. <laughs> and uh, so do you speak French fluently? Did you, did you speak French already? Well, not really. I mean, I did it for A-level at school, um, and then I got with him, and he took me to Paris. It was like a whirlwind in the first, like, month of knowing him. And his mum doesn't speak a word of English. Yeah. So all the French I picked up was him with his, with his mates. Mm. So I was basically saying the equivalent of, what's up, bro, to his mum when I met her. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, no, 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 this is bad French. And I was like, well, this is what you speak with your friends. Like, I don't know. <laughs> 
So are you, are you, have you got better now? Now I'm much better, yeah. yes. Okay. And we have French Tuesdays where we only speak French on a Tuesday. Oh, so I'm getting there. Wow. No wonder you yeah. did Strictly. Yeah. No, I'm not in today. Sorry, bye. I mean, au revoir. Just be there today. Le dance. Yesterday. And talking of travelling, uh, Clive, we mentioned that, you know, obviously you're a foreign correspondent, you go to, you know, trouble spots and uh, difficult areas, but you're now doing a lovely thing. You're kind of oh. being paid to go on your holidays. Oh, it's... L well, I'm not sure about that. It was still pretty... Oh, come on, work. Clive! Um, <laughs> <laughs> no guns, no Kalashnikovs, no bombs, okay. yes. <laughs> Italy. Italy, mm. 15 part series. Uh, 15 parts? I know. That's I a long know. holiday. It's a big country. <laughs> it's a big country. All the restaurants. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, lots, and lots of restaurants, yeah. yeah. And um, uh, it's, it's a place that I've been going to for, for many, many years for work and play. And um, the BBC said, you know, hey, let's do a travel series. So it's in Italy and we go from the heel to the top of the boot. Um, you know, I take part in the world. Tiramisu making championships. Ooh! Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. The results, <laughs> the results, you'll find out. You'll find out. I take part, I, I am the navigator in a classic car rally, the Mille Miglia, the uh, Centi Miglia. Oh, I. And, um, I'm still the hearing holiday. Stops. Anyone exactly. else? I'm still, still hearing holiday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I drove a car stops. and had some pudding. Get this, get this. <laughs> but get this the pit stops are not for gas, they're for Prosecco. Again, oh, what? holiday. Yeah. Holiday. Yeah. Holiday. Yeah. holiday. Holiday. Okay. Holiday. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Okay, it's one big giant <laughs> holiday. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Okay. So that's you, kind of reporting from all over the world. Yeah. And I was thinking about you, Daniel. Is there anywhere you can go in the world where they don't know who you are? <laughs> <laughs> um, it happened when we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> Really, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a no. I think yeah, that's a it no. It happened. I remember once one one person didn't know who <laughs> I was. Day, yeah. no. When did it? When did it nearly happen? No, I can't. No. <laughs> where, where, where was it? Where was, was it? On some, I'm literally in some island in the middle of the Caribbean, in, 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 in just off Panama, and um, it was a while ago. And the uh, my dresser um, on the movie had gone out to this island the week before, and he'd got there and he told everybody that he was James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd got treated so well that it was a good day. <laughs> and um, when we got to... I, I went there the following week, and all I remember is we could have this little plane and we landed on this amazing place we went to. Um, and we landed there, and everybody came rushing and went, James Bond, James Bond, James Bond. They looked at me and went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a good day. They must have been so surprised if they finally saw the film. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, oh, oh, wait, yeah. wait. And, and here's the, the thing. Having left the Bond... Uh, franchise behind. Mm. You're now in Knives Out, this other big franchise, which, uh, am I right that this one's open-ended? There could be as many movies as... Uh, I, listen, I mean, Ryan and I talk about it all the time, but we'll, we'll make them as long as people are laughing and enjoying them, and then, you know, we'll walk away when they, when they don't. That's, uh, that, that's the idea. Well, long may they continue. Uh, Daniel's film, Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery, is out now and on Netflix from the 23rd of December. Daniel Craig! <laughs> Meanwhile, Fleur East continues to rule the floor on Strictly Come Dancing uh, tomorrow night on BBC One and iPlayer from 7.15. And last weekend in Blackpool, I mean, it's rare to have a perfect... What are you saying, Daniel? <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? He's looking into my eyes going, you must be exhausted. <laughs> no, no, no. He's saying, I want to be on Strictly. <laughs> yeah. 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 You heard it here, folks. Yeah. You heard it first here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I own a dinner jacket. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Sorry, so I, don't know, I don't know if you were watching uh, last weekend, but uh, it's rare that people have a perfect evening. But in Blackpool, you literally had a perfect evening. Oh, it was incredible, honestly. To get to Blackpool Week on Strictly, it's one of the most iconic weeks on the show. We got there, we had a couple's choice, which is always a bit risky. Traditionally, it's like, oh, it's not Latin or ballroom. How's this going to go? And my brief I gave to the choreographer was, I want it at Super Bowl halftime. No yeah. pressure. That think J Lo Beyonce <laughs> like that kind of thing. Yeah. I was like, I need to live out my dreams. I don't know how long I'm going to be on this show for. <laughs> and it was she amazing. It, it was amazing because because not only was the first forty, but it was the mm. first ten. For first Craig. ten from Craig. Craig, and he looked so miserable. He was just like sitting there. It was like <laughs> the scores are in, and he was like, 
that. And I was like, oh, go on, is he going to do it? Is he going to do it? And then he just lifted it up and he kept saying afterwards, it was Fleur's fault. I had to. I had to. <laughs> <laughs> i tell you what, let's remind ourselves of that stunning routine uh, last weekend in Blackpool. Watching it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is it true that you'd never drunk coffee before Vito gave you coffee in this? Never drunk coffee. Three years on breakfast radio, never had a cup of coffee. Wow. Met an Italian. Yeah. He started teaching me Latin and ballroom, and I was like, give me the coffee. Yeah, it suits you, the coffee. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, it's working. Yeah, yeah. drink more coffee. <laughs> um, and obviously, a Destiny Child mashup, mm. and it attracted attention from. Michelle Williams from Destiny Child. Oh. She saw it. Yeah, she saw it. She tweeted and she said, amazing. Oh, bless her. That's really cool. Yeah. And Fleur, we often hear about the, the Strictly curse, mm. but apparently with Vito, you are safe. I'm safe. Oh, yeah. You know, the way he got me into the mood of the Argentine tango was he'd have a packet of cheese and onion crisps <laughs> just before we get really close. And then to get my hold in the waltz right, he'd have some garlic and then he'd breathe out and go, Whoa, and I'd go, Whoa. So there it is. <laughs> That's your position. <laughs> See, I think I'm all right. But <laughs> what's the story? But didn't you and your husband, Marcel, didn't you take precautions? Was it in Mexico you took precautions? <laughs> no. So this story was taken completely out of context. We went to this, this ancient ritual in Mexico, and it's supposed to, like, cleanse your soul and spirit. And then after that news came out, I was then announced for Strictly, so people assumed it was to get rid of the curse. But you know what? It's actually been a blessing for my marriage. I mean, it's great. We've been together 12 years. How often in your marriage do you dress up, look different every week, get to do all these sexy dances in front of your husband? After that Argentine tango, it was like we got married again. <laughs> it was great. Hello. It was wonderful. Wow. <laughs> it was. Here you are. Never. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Clive Myrie, you must have been asked to do Strictly. I, um, <laughs> I, 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 have I? Yes, yes, you must have been. You have. You have. Yeah. I do like, you should I, do it. Daniel, have you been asked to do I love throwing that over to me. No, this is your question. <laughs> but also, why is that a hard question? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. It's in negotiation. Um, oh, were you, oh, were you in the Christmas special or something? <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> is there, is there vodka in this? <laughs> I don't know. Oh my God. Uh, well, isn't it? I tell you what, whether you're, whether Clive's in Strictly or not, yeah. we do have a new dancing star on the sofa. Uh, I don't know if you've seen this uh, vodka ad uh, oh that's God. out. I <laughs> think <laughs> <laughs> dancing fans. After everywhere. that, you can't show off of that amazing oh. thing we've just seen. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, here it is. Here it is. A little clip of it, anyway. Feast your eyes. This is Daniel Craig dancing the night away. Woo! Oh, yeah. oh, yeah! Oh, my gosh! Wow! <laughs> That's so cool! Yeah! Oh! Yeah, oh. yeah oh baby! <laughs> yeah, baby! Hey! Wow! Wow! Love it, love it! I mean... Two things. One, did that... Two take... things. Well, <laughs> well, okay, there's another one. Only two. <laughs> what? Did it take... Did it, did it take well, ages to do that? Ages. <laughs> <laughs> days and days. Um, he ain't going on Strictly. Um, <laughs> yeah. God, they save the world from that. Um, <laughs> um, there was a... We, uh, I get, get, I'll get this together. Uh, there's a guy called Jaquel Knight, who's a choreographer, who's one of the... He actually did um, all the single ladies and sort of, like, he's kind of like... Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. He came to my house for two days and we worked very hard just <laughs> to get... I can't count. 
Oh, OK. Right, and uh, so I ha unless I kind of just... I'm feeling it, I, I can't do it. As soon as you kind of go, well, two, three, four, one, three, three, I'm like, what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just... I you can't just, just feel the music. Yeah, yeah, so you're trying. a proper dancer. Mm, yeah. 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 So, yeah. But he was there and he kind of took me through it. And we just... And it, Taika, um, or Titi, directed it and it was just like, he said, can you dance? And I was like, mm. <laughs> and I, when I'm alone in the dark, maybe. <laughs> um, but uh, so, and he said, I want you to dance all the way through it. So we just, I just went, let's do it. And I have to say, you it do... starts on the Pont Neuf. You don't see that because that's the, the beginning of it. We're on oh, the yes, Pont Neuf. With all the paparazzi. With the light, and I danced down the Pont Neuf and we closed the Pont Neuf off. So that was like just yeah. amazing. And you do look like you're having a ball. Yeah. Like, is this, is this the sort of thing, if, if you were James Bond, would they have said, no, Daniel, you cannot do this? Every time the camera said cut, I was doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows that, but that's what I was basically That's what we doing. missed. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That's what we missed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, well, uh, Fleur is continuing her journey on Strictly tomorrow night. Uh, what are you giving us tomorrow night? We are doing a rumba. Is that fun? It's another sensual, passionate dance. Ooh. So it's going to be our third marriage, me and Marcel. <laughs> <laughs> Very uh, well, look, good luck to you and Vito, <laughs> and indeed Marcel. <laughs> uh, Fleur East, everybody! Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, Clive Mary, obviously, uh, Trouble times we live in, uh, but it, it gives you these extraordinary opportunities to, to tell stories. So we all saw you in Ukraine and Kyiv. So how does that happen? Because presumably they can't, you know, they don't just tell you to go. Do you mm. volunteer for that or do they ask or how does it happen? First of all, no BBC correspondent is forced to go anywhere. Yeah. Particularly if it's a war zone, you're asked. And if you want to go, you go. If you don't, you don't. And um, it's not going to be a blemish on your record. You're not going to be, you know, done out of a job in the future. It's absolutely your decision. So, interestingly, I get a phone call from the um, deputy editor of the 10 o'clock news, a guy called Johnny Whittaker, and he says, do you fancy going to Ukraine? And I'd just come off the back of doing a pretty big series on COVID in, the, in January. Uh, this year. And I said, I'm a bit knackered, mate. I really... Oh, God. And he says, well, he's got 150,000 troops on the border. Do you fancy going? I said, oh, I'll think about it. Put down the phone. Went and made a cup of tea. And then I thought, I've never been to Ukraine. <laughs> I've never been. Why not? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> and he ain't going to invade. Right. He ain't going to invade. God. So I ring him back and I say, yeah, I'll go. Because he ain't going to invade. And Johnny says, no, nah, he ain't going to invade. <laughs> I fly out on the Wednesday. Ryanair, twenty nine ninety nine from Stansted. <laughs> it's key. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, your license fee is safe. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even have a meal. <laughs> I didn't even have a meal. Crisp. We yeah, exactly. <laughs> we land. Uh, I'm with. Brilliant producer Annie Duncanson. We go to lovely restaurant, have lunch. Sun is shining. Everybody is out. He ain't gonna invade. Hmm. I then uh, do the six present the six o'clock news, then present the ten o'clock news, and in between those two bulletins, the atmosphere had changed, completely changed. And I interviewed Lee's Doucette on the roof of uh, our hotel, where we were broadcasting live. She was already there. Lise had al was already there, yeah. Right. Lise was already there. And um, we agreed that something is up. Uh, Sorry, because you feel that from your contacts or you feel mm -hmm. that yeah. from, like... Yeah. So you're feeling... You, you're getting the word. Ex absolutely, wow. because the President's office had gone quiet. Right. Um, President Zelensky had been pretty forthright in saying they're not going to invade. They're not going to invade. Yeah. Mm. The Americans had put out in their, the intelligence that they had suggesting that he was going to invade, mm. but the suggestion was that they were doing that in order to sort of, you know, make it difficult for them to actually do it. Right. Put the intel out there first. But Zelensky went quiet, and there was a sense that something was up, and Lee's in her live made that clear. That was midnight local time, 10 o'clock here, and I think they invaded about 2.30. And when that happens, yeah. what's put in place to keep you safe? Or are you just keeping yourself safe? You have a whole team of security that are there. Yeah. Um, and they are your eyes and ears out there while you're actually able to work. So that's really important. They're all ex-military, and they know the lie of the land. 
Um, and you've got local fixers and producers who also know what's going on on the ground as well. So that's really important. But the bottom line is we all had meetings with the, uh, with the person in charge, I see, Kate Peters, individual meetings, and we were asked, do you want to stay? And a number of people said, no, I didn't sign up for this. One person was in tears. I need to get out. Yeah. So a convoy of vehicles left. Yeah, absolutely, mm. absolutely. Mm. So a convoy of vehicles left about two days after the invasion. And uh, I was asked by Kate if I wanted to stay. And I'd already made up my mind. I said I wanted to stay. I wanted to try to tell the truth of this story. There's mm. a lot of lies and propaganda and, frankly, crap that's put out about what might be going on. And I wanted to try to tell the truth of what was going on. And... Um, I said to her, what do you think the Russians will do if they come into the hotel? And she's a fluent Russian speaker. She's the bureau chief in Moscow. She knows the Russian mindset. And she said, well, they'll be brusque. They won't stand on ceremony. and They'll probably just want to kick us out. And I said, well, do you think they might want to kill us? And she said she didn't know. She wasn't sure. But she didn't think they would. And I said, OK, that's good enough for me. <laughs> so I stayed, and a number of others stayed as well. Yeah. Fantastic camera operators, fixers, producers. I mean, our whole team mm -hmm. got that show on the road for those first two weeks of that invasion. And they were all magnificent. Mm -hmm. Absolutely magnificent. Yes. Here's the thing I didn't know. Uh, so, uh, Fleur East, obviously, you, you sing, you dance, you drink coffee. Uh, yes. But uh, you are... Qu are you qualified as a journalist? You trained as yes. a journalist? Yes, like, yes. Yeah, I studied... I did a degree in journalism and history. Oh, wow. Yeah, so hearing you talk about this, I'm like, wow, this is so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. One of my favourite quotes when I did my degree was, journalism is the first draft of history. And that's what got me Can so be. interested in it. It's like, all, everything you're doing, all those reports, all those moments, yeah, yeah. that is history yeah. like, forever. People will look back at that and watch you. And yeah, no, we're, we're, we're so privileged to sort of, you know, mm. be in the position where we're seeing these huge moments. I mean, you know, I did a lot on, on the COVID pandemic. You know, mm. that's a once in a 100 year event. You know, the war in Ukraine, a once in a, what, 70 odd year event, mm. you know, a, a, a huge major war on on European soil. It, yeah, we're in, in an incredibly privileged position. So no you question. always see these movies where it's like the end of the world and you see the journalist going, I'm staying, yeah, guys, yeah. I'm yeah. staying. And you're just yes. like, just I'm go. I'm not going. <laughs> not going. You're a fool. Get out. <laughs> you're that guy. You're that guy. Yeah. 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 So, Daniel, did you ever want to do anything else? It was always just actor, actor, actor. When I grew up, I mean, I wanted to be an actor, but there weren't a lot of outlets for being an actor yeah. where I grew up. So um, I was probably going to jo join the Navy. Oh, wow. Um, at one point, and then I sort of got into waiting, and then I nearly took a job on the QE2. I would still be there, probably. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I, is it still floating, the QE2? I don't even know. It's, I know, one of them is. But I was a waiter, yeah. I was a, I'm from about yeah. 16, I, I, I waited. In posh and, restaurants, or...? I mean, they were kind of posh. Um, they were in Chester, which makes them kind of posh. <laughs> yeah, Chester's posh. There's Chester's posh. There's very posh, yeah, but there was always a fight. I don't know what, I, what it was. <laughs> it was always a, a night, there was always a night, night when you sort of like round the back and you could smoke back then, so you'd be having a quick fag round the back of that kind of like in, on your break, and then you'd sort of like, you'd sort of like hear this, <laughs> and there'd be a chair thrown. Yeah. <laughs> you like, what, why? We're in a silver service. Fine <laughs> dining in Chester. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Clive reporting. <laughs> 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 I love the fact you're from Bolton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm a bo yeah, we're, we're both northerners. Yeah, I'm, I'm a Bolton bo bo lad. Like northerners. No, 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 I don't. Show it up. No, I uh, yeah, it's a good question. Uh, Clive's latest role <laughs> is a real departure, hosting <laughs> Mastermind. Mastermind, of course, continues on Mondays on BBC Two at seven thirty, and it's a very special year for Mastermind. Fifty oh, years. Fifty ah. years. Yeah. I know. It's it's absolutely incredible. Such a simple format. And when they asked you, I mean, what, was it an, an easy yes or did you worry about your reputation stepping away from the newsroom and wouldn't no, people take you seriously? That is not what I wor worried about, um, uh, to be honest with you. It's always good to try to show the public that you're not just a sort of, you know, robotic news reader <laughs> type thing. And this was a good opportunity to do that. No, I was worried about following in the footsteps of 
John Humphreys and Magnus Magnuson, titans yeah. of, of broadcasting. So that, that, was, that was the concern. Now, special subject, here's the thing. Are there... Can that be anything, or are there rules mm. about what can be your special yeah, subject? There are, there, there are rules, there are rules. Um, and um, you can't just pick, you know, history of apples or something. I mean, I, I don't know. Oh. That sounds really uh, hard. Actually, that, that, that does sound hard. hard. That does sound, that does sound very hard. That. that does sound very yeah. hard. <laughs> um, they need to be narrow, slightly narrower and focused. Um, and uh, there need to be recognised sources mm. that you get your information from. Then, every, obviously, everything can be verified. So, Daniel Craig, actor, what is your specialist subject? I don't have a specialist subject. <laughs> <laughs> I don't look like I've got a specialist subject. You might know something about something. No. I don't know. No. <laughs> no. Gardening? Nothing. nothing. What did you say? Dancing. Yes. Dancing. Yes. Dancing. 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 Yeah. Hip thrusting. Yeah. Hip thrusting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Fleur, would you have a specialist subject? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Kardashians. <laughs> <laughs> Would that be allowed? Nope. No. <laughs> why, why, why not? Why, why would the Kardashians Very, not be allowed? Um, yeah. I, be I, I don't know, actually. But I, I've, I've got a feeling that there may be issues. Um, but there are I'm a lot not, of sources. I'm not, there. A, there are a lot of sources. Yeah, they've done loads of books. books. Yes. Yes. Because there's a lot of gossip attached to it, so you can't really verify everything. So maybe it's potentially. Yeah. 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 But we find out. I mean, you're clearly. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're clearly putting yourself forward to <laughs> be on Celebrity Master. Give us a I think you are. Daniel is going to get to the bottom of this. He's channeling Benoit Blanc. Uh, well, Mastermind continues on BBC Two, Mondays at 7.30. And, of course, the news never stops. <laughs> uh, Clive Myrie, everyone. <laughs> right, Christmas is coming and the panto goose is getting fat. So let's meet the stars of Mother Goose. It's John Bishop and Ian McKellen. <laughs> Uh, Step uh, down a little bit, make room, make room, make room. How are you? Uh, oh, you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, uh, welcome along. Lovely to see Thank you. you. Have you come straight from rehearsal? Oh, it's exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have. We, we have come straight from rehearsal. We've got a few days left. Oh, it's fun and games. <laughs> <laughs> when did you start a Jedi in? Apart from this show, when did you last do a pantomime? Uh, in 19... <laughs> It was 1990. <laughs> 1990 in Harrogate. Were you in a frock? No. No? No. I played Rollo, I think. Thigh boots? No. Oh. No. I, I, think, I think we had... I think I wore... What do you call those things? Knickerbockers. Knickerbockers. Oh. I think I had those on, yeah. Yes. yeah. Was that the attraction of doing the... Uh... It was a job, Ian. <laughs> it was a job. <laughs> That was the attraction of doing it. So here's the thing, you, it starts off, it starts off, Mother Goose, next Saturday, 3rd of December, oh, in Brighton. Yes, Brighton. Right yeah. Uh, so this production of Mother Goose, what makes it it's special? It sounds like you've thrown everything at this. It's got it all. <sighs> well, I went to the management and I said, I, uh, before I finish, I want to play... Dame once more. I, I have played uh, Widow Twanky in, in the Latin. Great success. And as, thank you, as the saying goes, once they've seen your Twanky, can a goose be far behind? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, <I'm> <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but but M Mother Goose is the great part for, for a dame <laughs> because it's a, the centre of the story and it's not on the adjunct. It's, it's all about a woman who is not quite happy with her lot uh, and has her wishes granted and um, we we'll see what happens. And, John, who do you play? I play, I play Mother Goose's husband. <laughs> Very good. Yes. So, so Daddy Goose. Called what? I, only, I only found... I'm, I'm called Vic. Vic Goose. Vic. And I only found out <laughs> here, in the research just here, that I am Ian's first ever stage husband. Well, I... now... That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. And I do Love believe that I, I, I'm John Bishop's first uh, stage wife. <laughs> 
No, but the others have been women. <laughs> 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 the thing about pantomime is uh, that it, 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 it used to be a summer entertainment. Oh, right. And I don't know why that was, but over the years, it's been going for about 150 years now, mm. eventually settled down to, to, to the, the Christmas, the, mm. the New Year period. And when, uh, when I was a kid, the, pan the big pantomimes used to open on uh, Boxing Day, the day after Christmas Day, and run right through to uh, Easter Saturday. Right. right through the winter, which is when you need cheering up, isn't yeah. it? That's right. And I thought, well, why can't that go on? And then... Uh, there were also pantomimes when I was a kid that used to tour just for a week in different places. So I thought, if we put those two things together, we'd see if it worked. And, uh, well, how, we'll how see. And uh, that's what we're up to. Yep. We we're going up till April. Wow. Wow. April, wow. Yeah. So you've no so excuse for not seeing it. Seeing it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you asked. <laughs> <laughs> but do you do you de Christmas it a bit as it goes on? It's not about Christmas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, it's if if there's a story about it, it's about our relationship. It's about <laughs> it's about fame. It's about money. It's about chasing your dreams and realizing they're not the same. And mixed in that, there's some knob gags and singing and dancing. <laughs> 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 and, and John, John, I haven't seen you since uh, your gorgeous documentary about uh, your family and your yeah. son went out, uh, which was so special. It was just gorgeous. I don't know if you guys saw it. Um, and it ended with you giving that stand-up performance uh, with British Sign Language. Yeah. So have you kept it up? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm still doing, still learning BSL. I, uh, I do it before I go to rehearsals. I'm doing it twice a week and carrying on, so I'm on level two now. It goes up to six levels. Mm. So I've still, like, got the vocabulary of a four-year-old, but I'm still, I'm still doing it. <laughs> but you can have a conversation. Yeah, I can have a conversation. Show, show them what the word yeah. for, for pantomime is. <laughs> um, it's a beautiful language, and, it, and it's so rich, and I learn new words. Like, you know what the sign for panto is? OK. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's a funny language as well. <laughs> it's um, like, like the sign for Scotland is that. <laughs> <laughs> the sign for Matt Hancock is that. <laughs> uh, well, you can see uh, Ian and Claude and Brother Goose around the country from next yeah. Saturday until yeah. April. John Bishop and Ian McKellen, everybody. <laughs> Right, it is time for music. This multi-platinum selling pop star is back with his latest album, Charlie, here performing his current single, Loser, it is Charlie Puth. <laughs>
me still Or am I living for nothing? Don't know where it went wrong But I'll just take the hand It's gonna take some adjusting Oh, I'm such a loser How'd I ever lose? Thank you very much for that gorgeous performance. Beautiful. Thank you for having me again. No. I, I was here a year ago, you remember? With yeah, with Elton, Elton. John. Yeah. yeah. It's wow. crazy how fast a year is. It has actually yeah. flown by, hasn't it? Uh, so listen, that song, that song, that is from the album uh, Charlie, which is out now. Oh, yes. Charlie's away. That's the album Charlie. <laughs> Couldn't, oh, couldn't really think of another name for it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, now, and I, because I'd read about it before it came out, and you know, you say, oh, this has got to be a breakup album. So <laughs> I was imagining quite a boo hoo album, but it's a very upbeat mm. breakup album. Well, I love musical dichotomies, and I love uh, uh, expressing myself musically, which is something I believe I do best uh, through sounds, happy sounds, and sad sounds. But a lot of um, these songs were uh, birthed off of TikTok. And yeah, so, so what's, how did TikTok play a role in this album? How did that happen? Um, I mean, my whole thing, I think my role on the internet is to be the teacher in a way. I want to show kids and everyone of all ages that music can be made out of anything. Like, I used sounds of air conditioners on, uh, on that song, Loser. You wouldn't be able to hear it because it's, like, really... Uh, uh, deep within the track, but it's just, it adds a lot of texture. Okay, so I think you can, you can uh, oh, demonstrate yes. this. I've, I've brought my laptop and tiny oh. keyboard here. Oh, wow. I'm going to move my drink back. Oh, yeah. yeah. I thought this would be better than me just chatting about it, but... Okay. So, music can be made um, from anything, even the seemingly most unmusical thing ever. Um, I got in a car to ride over here, and the driver turned the car on, and it sounded like this, and I recorded the, uh, I had this idea, but I recorded the, uh, the start of the engine and the tone. I knew that there was gonna be a little, you know when you start your car up, ding, ding, this is what the car sounded like. In a Ferrari. Yeah. It's an Aston Martin. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> They're all thinking, we weren't, we weren't in a car that. like that. What kind of a car are you driving? <laughs> Driving, it was, <laughs> I, the it's the, the Range Rover autobiography. I feel very fancy coming Good. over here. This yeah. is what it sounds like again. So that little chime, that ding, happens on all Range Rovers. I isolated, this is just from my phone here. The green is that isolated. And then, mm. I, my I love music. <laughs> yeah, you do. It can put that little chime ah. on the keyboard and then when you pitch it down, all it is, is a, it's a sign zone, and you can make, like, little music. <laughs> oh. But what's really interesting is that a lot of car chimes are sign tones, which is, like, when you, when you curse, it's, what the <laughs> It's... <laughs> that's, that's all it is. So when you're on... How many times have you heard this on an airplane? Okay. It's the same... So the Range Rover <laughs> ding, and... You know, they're gonna sue you tomorrow for... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but what's great about this versatile sound is that you can really play, you can play a lullaby, you can play, uh, it, it kind of works with, with everything, too. <laughs> Very. Very good. I, I just, that was the first song that I did. Yeah. That came out. I don't know. 
Brilliant. Brilliant. Very, very good. You've made Clive very happy. I am a happy, I am a happy man. <laughs> so there's Emerson, the example. Thank you so much for doing that. Very quickly, I must mention, you've got a gig in London on, is it Monday night? I do, yeah, at the Coliseum. Well, I'm listen, good luck with that. Good luck with the album, and thank you so much for that performance. Charlie Puth, everybody! <laughs> Beautiful. Very nice to meet all of you. Is nearly it, but we'll go at just time for a visit to the big red chair. Who's there? <gasps> Hello. <laughs> Hi there. Hi, what's your name? Jamie. Jamie, lovely. And where are you from, Jamie? I'm from Texas. Texas. Uh, do you live here now? Are you on holidays? What's the story? Yeah, I live here now. Oh, what do you do here, Jamie? I do marketing for a beer company. Marketing for a beer company? Mm. Okay. <laughs> uh, off you go with the story. Uh, so, my dad's <laughs> boyfriend called us from space on our first date. Wow. Hey? There's oh, a lot to one <laughs> <laughs> It's too much. <laughs> yeah. Too much. <laughs> it was just trying a bit hard. Yeah. There was a same-sex yeah. parent. Yeah. There was yeah. space. Yeah. There was a phone call. <laughs> we don't have time for this. <laughs> <laughs> you open on Saturday. <laughs> okay. Um, I bet you that oh, was a very Lord. good story. I'm horrible. I bet you that was a great story. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Jamie. Uh, okay. Uh, next up. Hello, sir. Hello. Hi. <coughs> it's uh, Jamie. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what's your name, sir? Paul. Paul, lovely. And uh, where are you from, Paul? Uh, originally from Middlesbrough, lived in Lancaster for 20 odd years. Okay, and uh, what do you do? Um, I'm retired. Okay, I'm uh, from? Uh, I was a teacher. Oh, right, lovely. What, sort, what subjects did you teach? Um, my degree's in economics, but I taught mainly PE. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the easy option. I like, I, I like the way. I like the way. Now is retired. Now is retired. <laughs> it's all coming out. <laughs> but no, you've still got sports on your shirt. You're still living the dream. Uh, yeah. uh, off you go with your story. OK. Uh, about 20 years ago, I was in Dublin in the stag do, and I bumped into this guy called Graham. I didn't really. That was just... I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, <that's> sorry. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, we had a really good night out. Next morning, we get up, and people are saying, what's going on? And someone asked me what time I got back to the hotel. I said, well... I left the, the nightclub at about uh, two, got back to the hotel at half past. My mate looked at me as if I was daft. He said, you're in the hotel disco. I said, really? I said, I walked out of the, the front door of the nightclub, got in a cab, told him which hotel I was in. The Irish cab driver there went, oh, OK, I'll take you there. Drove me around for 20 minutes, <laughs> delivered me to the front door <laughs> of the hotel, 20 yeah. minutes later, and said, there you go, 20 euros, mate. Yay! Yeah. All right, you can walk. You can walk. <laughs> yeah, it's cheaper. <laughs> Sweet story. Uh, okay, that really is all we've got time for. If you'd like to have a go in that red chair yourself and tell your story, you can. Just contact us via our website at this very address. Uh, please say a huge thank you to all of our guests tonight. Charlie Booth, everybody! <laughs> Clive Murray! Oh. Fleur East! Oh. Daniel Craig! Oh. John Bishop! Oh. with music from First Aid Kit, strictly host Claudia Winkleman, chef and campaigner Jamie Oliver, and Star Trek legend George Takei. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. John Clive Myra as he travels across Ukraine, meeting the performers who use music, not guns, as a weapon. Press red to watch their musical freedom fighters on iPlayer. Now, both England and Wales have been in action today. Of course, we've World Cup highlights next.